Well, hey there, Matt Filio here in the studio, um, working again on these vignette portraits. And the next step here in the beginning process is working on the warm tones within the initial layers. Um, so I established the cooler tones and darker values within the initial layers uh, using primarily ultramarine blue and raw umber dark. And now I'm going to be working on this portrait to start with um, using a warmer tone um, for the shadowed areas within the figure. Um, so I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to take raw umber dark noticing the colors in her flesh tone are a little bit on the lighter side, more uh, fair skinned, and so we don't want something that's too reddish or orangish, raw umber dark, it's kind of a cooler brown. I'm just taking a little of that, mixing it with some matte, matte medium here, and uh, getting a nice light mix, nothing too strong, nothing too crazy, and I'm going to start working then. I, I'm going to leave actually I'm going to leave a couple areas open on it. You see this cooler tone on the side of her face where the, um, I don't know, it's probably reflected light from the pool shining up there. I'm going to leave that open and I'm going to primarily concentrate on this section here where it's darker on her forehead and then working my way down from there. I'm also going to bring that color up into her hair a little bit, but I'm going to differentiate between the darker and lighter values. See, I'm leaving this area open on the top uh, because that's where the light is shining. And uh, I'm just seeing that difference right away between those two different areas. Um, we're going to darken over her eyes. Yes, you eyes are not white. I mean, they are white, but they often don't look white because of the shadows on them. So I'm painting right over the eyes. I'm going to paint, um, trying to differentiate here this shadow on her um, upper lip area and nose. And then this strong shadow going from her forehead over her nose right there. You can see that. Um, and again, I'm leaving this area open. We'll bring the shadow over about this far in. This whole area is dark, the chin is dark. You know, I use my sketch to really determine where these shadows should begin and end. And I recommend that you do the same thing. In the sketching process, really get some defined areas for your shadows. That's so important. Then when you paint, you'll know exactly where to put your initial layers. And see this is where I'm putting it, right where I have my sketch. And I actually did some preliminary shading um, on this. You know, so again I know exactly where to go. Um, and so I'm bringing this shadow almost to the edge, but again there's a little bit of a cooler tone here where this reflected light from the water comes into play and I want to leave that open because then with that I can use ultramarine blue and some cooler colors to establish a difference there. Let's get a little of this color into her hairline. We'll go over a couple of the um, shapes found within her hair that I made as I sketched. And uh, again leaving that light area on the top. This edge can get a little bit darker right here. There we go. And just we'll just touch that portion. All right. So now, now let's keep working downward, starting from kind of from left to right, top to bottom. But we're just concentrating on the subject, and we're going to paint the arms again. I want to let's zoom out a bit so I can see the whole thing. And I'm really paying attention to my shadows that I sketched. Very important. So I'm going to color in her whole arm here. It's just like coloring in. Nothing fancy. Except that I want to leave this open up here because there's that lighter tone again. 
Yeah, we want to work all the way up to the edges. There's this highlight right here created by her, her uh, chin with the cast shadow on that. And then part of her uh, swimsuit is also casting a shadow. So I'm cutting in along these edges, just flipping my brush down. These um, angled flat edge brushes work great for that. They really allow you to cut in just like as if you were painting a house. You know, they recommend using those flat but angled sash edge brushes. And you can really cut in your corners without having to tape anything off in house painting. But here, of course, we don't tape things off. But this angled brush works similarly. It really is fantastic. And uh, I recommend grabbing some of those kind of brushes from your art supply store. So I'm leaving this area open because we're going to have cooler tones. Again, here the sky would be casting a light on here. So we have a direct light source from the sun. We have another uh, secondary light source from the sky. And I'm leaving that area open for a cooler color to go on that. Whereas the sunlight, of course, will be warmer in tone. Um, now let's, let's get the shadows established on the rest of her arm. I stopped off here. I don't want to overlap that. I want to bring it right up to the edge of where I ended up so I don't disturb that layer. It's already begun to dry. When you paint with these really light layers with matte medium, you'll find that it dries amazingly fast. And for people that always want to extend the open time of acrylic paint with uh, retardant mediums and things like that, this uh, technique is not going to work for you very well. You'll have to change your mindset. And instead of trying to keep your paint working time open like oils, just think of acrylics as being different. Think of this as almost being like watercolor in the way you begin the painting. You want it to dry fast, and that's fast drying layers are your friend in this technique. Um, and so when the paint's really thin like this, it dries within seconds even. I mean, I would say less than a minute. You have, you have really just seconds to work it, and I don't want you to stress about that. Um, it's just always keeping that wet edge, and then if you have a stopping point, just bring your paint up to that edge to match that edge. Don't try to overlap it. If you do overlap it, you're going to have a darker splotch or you're going to start lifting up the color and you're not going to you're not going to feel very good when that happens. <laughs> but if it does happen, it's not the end of the world. You just have to fix it in the next layer. That's all. You know, there's anything can be fixed on this. It's just you want to limit your mistakes because, let's face it, uh, fixing mistakes takes more time and we don't want to have to take any unnecessary time that we don't need to in painting. So, um, Now, here it's interesting because we have some yellowish light from this yellow container she's holding, this yellow green container, and that's coloring her leg a little bit. So I, I need to account for that. I'm going to bring this color up to a certain point and then there is a kind of a defined edge where that yellow color comes into play and I'm going to leave room for that. I'm not going to paint that within this layer. I'm going to leave that be and we'll tackle that in another layer. Um, unless of course I want to mix yellow into it right now but I think I'll, I'll leave it be for another layer. At this point, I'm going to switch over to my other canvas and uh, we'll just work over there. And Maybe I'll just keep this in the same video. I know this video might get a little longer than most, but let's just keep this video rolling and we'll begin to establish the um, tone of the subject. I want, to, I want to have the right color here. I don't know if I want to color over everything or just, the, yeah, I think I'm going to color over just the darker areas within the uh, subject. So again, two options. You could paint in the whole thing, just fill a color over the whole thing, 
or you could paint just the darker shadows and darker values and that's what I'm going to choose to do within this layer. Then in the next layer I'll go over the whole skin tone establishing that. You'll see how it develops. But here I'm just going to hit just the darker shadows and mid-tones, none of the highlights. Um, so that would involve bringing this up into the boy's leg a little bit. So I have to use some differentiation, um, seeing that the shadows go on this side of his leg, on the right side, and then we kind of blend that out. We go up in here a little bit, blend that out. Um, then we have a shadow here under his leg, shadow on this side a bit, and uh, it's a strong shadow right here on his foot. And then we also have a shadow up on his arm a little bit, or her arm I should say, behind him. It's darker up here. I think the light is coming a little bit from below. It's possible that this was had a strong shadow maybe a little later in the day and there's some reflected light from another source. But the light primarily is coming from the front and a little bit below. And you can see that because her head top of the forehead is darker and then underneath her eyebrows and that eye socket area that's illuminated um, you know the neck is illuminated this is darker on her chest so it's easy to see that the light is coming from below and so you're gonna have to fight that tendency to want to paint the light from above and the shadows below always pay attention to your light source on your picture study them don't just go right into painting without studying your picture. That's super important uh, because you always want to paint what you see and not what you think you see. So I'm going to darken again just over these certain areas. So it's, it's unusual that the top of his arm would be in shadow, but it is. And this portion of his wrist is in shadow. Then we have uh, some shadows on her hand right in here. We do have the shadows within her chest. Um, and so then we have a shadow on this side going over by her neck. And yeah, there's some warmer colors that are going to be coming into play. But I'm just going to establish the main shadows with this cooler color first. Now let's uh, work on the forehead area a little bit on the top of her skull and we'll get some of those shadows in play. Zoom in a little bit just so I can see it a little better. Nothing too precise, you know I have a large brush and I'm going to stick with it so it's not allowing me to get super precise with my where my shadows are going but I can get just a general feel and because this layer is so light it's going to be forgiving. I can always adjust it later if I have to. But you see how I'm leaving these areas open? Leaving the neck open. I'm going to paint on her shoulder. And I'm going to um, now bring this shadow down into her arm a little bit. I'm going to actually paint the whole area of her arm in because that's a pretty dark tone. And then I'm going to darken this side just a bit as well. Now on this side of her leg, a little bit of a shadow there will be good. Underneath on her abdomen area, a little bit of a shadow there. We can bring this color all the way in actually to the boy's shorts because they are um, not blue but they're more of a black color and again brown and blue mixed together equals black so we'll allow for that optical mix right now to begin taking place get a little shadow on this side of her leg leaving these areas open this knee area is quite lighter it's catching a lot of that light from below shining up as, as her uh, leg is kind of angled back in perspective this area here can be a little bit darker and then even, whoops, this area of her foot 
can be quite a bit darker too. And see I'm trying to get that differentiation right away. Now on the bottom portion of her leg we can begin to establish we'll start with the darkest area first rather than working from top down I'm going to work from dark to light so those two hierarchies are in place left to right top down darkest to lightest and you're going to have to cycle between those different areas when you're choosing on your method of working, you know, your order of working, you're going to have to choose what's most important. In this particular portion, going from darkest to lightest is more important than going from top down. So um, now that I've established that darker value on her foot, I'm going to blend out and put a little bit of shading on the left side of her leg. And then I'm going to just use my finger to dab the edge of that so there's a little bit of a gradation there. I'm going to also bring a little bit of shading on this side. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of the excess paint off my brush so I can feather this out. When you're using a very light layer within the glazing technique, it's very easy to dry brush and kind of fan the edges of your layer to get a nice smooth gradation. Alright, so now could get maybe a little bit of shading on this side of the boy's leg because the light is not it is coming a little more from the left side but not by much. It's mostly straight on. So alright. There's a little shadow right there on that. Whatever that is. I'm not sure what that is, but okay, um and that that should do it then pretty much for this particular layer I think I'm going to use this color though in one more spot while I have it handy I'm going to tackle this coloring of the wood behind them now we'll get a differentiation between um, that floor and then the door behind it you can see that in the reference photo it does have some brown in there it's not completely blue so we'll establish that Although I'm going to leave a little bit of a bluer edge right here so I'm not going to bring that down all the way here we go we can get maybe just a little bit of that same color into the door and then also on this edge this can have that brown so you see I left this open because I can see in the picture it's kind of bluish a little bit lighter I want to leave that blue to shine through and not hit it with the, this particular glaze now if there's any brownish color within the woodwork I can hit that right now with this layer and so let's see where that might be right here on this particular step it's a little darker in value a little less bluish so I'm gonna hit that just a bit with this layer um, this is str a strong shadow here and so if I use only blue glazes they'll be too vivid they'll be too strong on the blue side they need some brown to compensate for them and so that's where I'll do it right here in this initial layer get that get that set up and that'll also integrate some of the brown colors within the subjects into the whole painting because you want to promote color unity in your whole painting and that, a good way to do that is by using layers in different areas using a glaze I should say in different areas all right see maybe I'll just add a little bit of that color to this as well behind the woodwork and these posts on this porch there we go and I think that'll do the trick there so I will stop off here on this particular 
video and thank you so much for watching. If you like this, find it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Again, go to realisticacrylic.com for more tutorials like this. All right, God bless you and we'll talk to you soon.